isn't it bad when this happens? Like, do we really need this? Do we need Negreanu dancing in our face when we've lost and then holding the opponent's cards? This is a pretty mundane hand, you could say, a common spot, a bread and butter spot, but one that some of you are getting wrong, or at least you're having bad river thoughts on this hand, right? We definitely want to avoid bad, tilty, delusional river thoughts at all costs. So we go for range bet here on this flop. Definitely a fine way to play, though I would say if you're playing against a weak player, you might just want to check back hands like this and just get them to overstab. If you're playing against someone that's going to behave themselves more on the turn, then C betting flop is, is fine. We check back on the turn here. You could also go for some kind of half pot B60, B75, and we kind of snap call this half pot river bet. The thing with this is, well, there's three things, right, that you could you could go wrong with here. One, you could fail to realize that your hand actually beats value bets like queen 10 chops with king 10, as well as bluffs, and then might just beat like fish merges. I don't know who Luca Luca is. They could just be some kind of random whale, in which case they could be doing this with sevens and just have no idea how to play poker. That's the first thing. The second thing is that people fall into the trap of saying, they say things like, well, I just don't think Velen's bluffing for the sizing. If he wanted to fold, he would go bigger, blah, blah, blah. And they just play clairvoyant when they're not a clairvoyant. They don't have special psychic energy that allows them to know exactly what their opponent's doing here. So have a bit more of a logical, rigorous thought process. The other thing I would say in a spot like this is just that there's been minimal filtering. Velen has not filtered in a non enormous amount by getting to the spot there are still some air combos like four or five and king queen i don't know if that should bluff but yeah queen jack as villain actually showed up with here so yeah very easy river call nothing to say here just like clearly winning more than the 25 28 percent of the time whatever we need to win so i go a little bit insane in this hand i definitely do something pretty outrageous you can let me know what you think of this after this is the kind of hand that would go on my friend nick eastwood's punt or no punt videos for sure so nick if you're watching this this should go on the next one that we do. We could possibly fold flop already. This is like the kind of weird spot where we probably just want to play call only in this situation, meaning not much raise in theory. We could maybe click it back here with sixes fold or call. I think all plays are pretty reasonable on flop. Turn, we have the choice to turn our hand into a bluff. I decide to just check this time, which I think is also fine. We'll just figure out what happens on the river. We still have a good bit of showdown value. On the ace river, we have basically no showdown value. We're right at the bottom of our range. And thus, if we get checked to here, we're just going to be piling a bit of money into the pot, probably betting like 75 or 66% pot or something like that, making some kind of bet. Villain goes for this sizing. You can see my I'm already creeping up here with the mouse. Look at that instinct, guys, just trickling the slider all the way up there, all the way to 68. Are we going to stop at 68? Are we hell? We're going to go all in. 119.3. So this is a pretty terrifying thing to face if you're villain at this SBR. You know, we're basically saying, hey, we have ace-jack plus, maybe we have ace-queen, maybe we have king-10, a hand like this. We'd have to be pretty off our heads to bluff here. This will be a really under bluff spot in pool. However, if this player knows who I am, I'm probably going to get looked up here a lot lighter. This play, in order to be better than break-even, is going to need something like 63% fold equity if my rough mental math is okay there. It's not quite 2x pot. And so, yeah, I think this is going to be fine. I think villain's bulk range here is something like ace king just really really frequently for value maybe some other ace x here like some ace 10 ace 9 things like that some ace jack some ace queen i don't think ace queen plus will fold or pocket aces will fold or king 10 will fold but i don't expect to see a lot of king 10 here after the turn check i think that's really rare i do expect to see some ace queen which unfortunately will snap us but other than that i can see this getting through against ace king the vast majority of the time yeah i think this play is probably all right when i try and picture my fold equity in this spot I imagine that it's going to be somewhere somewhere above like 70%, maybe around 70%, 7 times out of 10, I think is a reasonable amount of the time to expect that to work. We interrupt this video with a very quick announcement. This is a graph from Carrot Corner coach James Shea. We showed you this when we were mentioning The Fortress, which is, of course, James's seminar course on how to sure up the holes in your game and make sure that you are not leaking all of the money that almost every poker player playing micro stakes and low stakes is leaking. I think James is a great poker player, but we were accused of being scammers for this graph. We were accused of being charlatans by certain members of the YouTube audience who said that this graph is in big blinds. This is a disgrace. This is clearly a complete scam and James is clearly an utter fish. Or maybe I just didn't realize that the graph was in big blinds. This is a mix of 100, 200 and 500 NL. As I explained in the comment section, hope that clears it up. The Fortress is gonna be a fantastic course I hope that none of the comments in that video made you actually think for a second that I would be 
such an idiot to try to scam in that way, man. If I was going to be a poker scammer, I think I could do better than posting a 10 and L graph in big blinds. Let's get back to the video. This hand is an illustration of how to get your fucking chips into the middle when you have a good hand. It's really simple, right, guys? See, when you have a good hand and your opponent doesn't bet, you've got two options on the turn here at this SBR. You can check raise or you can bomb like this. The advantage to bombing like this is that the pot doesn't remain tiny on the river against hands like ace king, ace jack, king queen, pair plus gutter, etc. The disadvantage is that if your opponent is actually good enough here to know how to bluff pocket sevens and pocket nines, then you will shut them down from doing that and cost yourself some money. Thankfully, the latter isn't really much of a consideration in this pool. People are just generally too bad at poker to find bets with nines here. Some people do, but it's not that common. People don't even know that like Jack-10 is a bluff on this node. So going for the overbet, I think, is by far the best option in terms of true EV, which is, of course, the kind of EV we actually care about at the end of the day. So you can tell yourself to shut up here when it tells you you should frequently check this turn or whatever. It's much better just to overbet and now jam the river. I'm going to show you the sort of call I really don't think you should ever make in real life. Nobody is going to bluff often enough at these stakes when you when they take this line of overbet jam in this spot. I really just don't think that they are. And so if you have the hand that Villain has here, I think you've got a really trivial fold. Like, okay, in theory, maybe you can mix some call. You block King Jack and you block two pair and you don't block many bluffs or, or whatever. You do block some bluffs maybe with the King buff like king 10 there maybe but the point is that like that hand is just a fold it's a wildly under bluff situation where you really don't want to make that call down there. okay this hand really kind of tilted me a little bit i was a bit torn on the river here let me show you what happened we had kings and we raised we got called here by the big blind the flop came jack 10 deuce rainbow we decided to bet big because that's usually what we do here i think jack 10 is very very often going to raise us on the flop if it does call flop it's very rarely going to snap call the flop as you saw there so running into jack 10 here in this node guys would be very unfortunate would it not be unfortunate to run into jack 10 in this spot yes yes it would over bet turn the turn is about as clean and juicy and lovely as they come i think forest is just pitching flop against our sizing pretty frequently so amazing spot go for the over bet here if you do anything else you don't deserve to play the game this is a really clear play definitely over bet kings in this spot Villain calls again. The river is also about as clean as possible. I don't think Villain can peel 5-3 on either the flop or the turn, and certainly not both. The sixes are just gone by now. 6-4 is gone on flop. There's just basically no two pair on this card. There's like maybe a little bit of jack six exactly, but Villain's range here is mostly just one pair, so we can probably just shove here in theory. I felt a bit queasy about just jamming for 204 big blinds here against pool. I felt like maybe we just get insane amounts of fold equity at that point. When you do jam for about 4x pot, you're expecting about 80%. I figured we may get like 93% or something, which is probably too much. So I thought if I just go for the normal overbet, this is less grotesquely overfolded probably, and this is just a good value sizing. So villain starts tanking. I start feeling really good about life. Remember what we said about the Jack-10, right? It's barely going to be there. Hardly ever. Feeling really good about life here. What's he got? Has he got ace-jack, queen-jack, 10-9, 10-8? Jack plus spade. Is he trying to figure out whether the spade's a good thing or a bad thing? Nope. He just slow rolled us with the jack 10. I guess he was thinking about jamming. Turn probes are a really over bluffed thing. When you check back this pair of jacks here and your opponent goes for a lead on this turn. So the, the fish here are just going to be like leading half pot with like eights and eight seven and ace jack and ace deuce and just every hand you can imagine a reg is going to do that as well but minus the eights and sevens the polarization mistakes but still it's super easy just to have way too many gutters and draws when you lead this turn whatever you do don't start folding jacks to one overbet here villain is saying for value that they have like king queen plus that's 12 combos of king queen divided by two or something six because they didn't three bet pre that's like a little bit of pocket fours three combos of that three combos of pocket threes What's that? 6 plus 6 is 12. Two combos of 4 3 suited. That's 14. Villain is saying they have like 14 value combos here. They don't even have ace queen. Don't fold when there are 14 value combos and like 6,000 combos of gut shots. Please don't fold the turn. So just call there. Don't be like too intimidated by overbets. That's the only thing I'm pointing out here. Villain thinks about it a little bit on the river. This river sucks because 6 7 and ace deuce. For the most part, I think we should just call again because there's this concept called landing range. When your opponent lands on the river with way too many air combos, they're probably going to over bluff. Goes ahead and three bets. Pretty standard call. Flop is king eight deuce with a flush draw. And this is going to be played as range 33 by most people. When you're in the big blind though, you might actually have quite a lot of dog shit on this flop. Like you might have combos like ace five off, or you might have ace six off, or you might have 
jack five suited of hearts so when i just sort of click this back plus a little bit here it's incredibly difficult for villain to navigate especially if they are three betting like a decent amount of bluffs pre-flop this is a raise that you're going to overfold against unless you're studied and you also have to play like a decent amount of jam against this is just creating problems for pool for humans that they're just not going to be able to to solve we talk a lot more about plays like this in our course cash injection which is cheap and you know a much smaller investment than the carrot poker school if that's out with your budget and definitely a course that can give you a lot of quick weapons that you can add to your arsenal right away to increase your ev and hopefully your win rate so that's a classic one and that is covered in that course along with another nine exploits and we go into that one in more detail there okay here's another spot i see people get wrong pretty frequently so again three betting the weaker player don't worry about it take a bet off it though if you don't want to call a jam here with ace queen off just make it eight not nine or ten you could even make it like 750 queen five deuce going for a small bet i could maybe use big bets on this board if the stacks were a bit deeper and there was any real urgency to build the pot or get towards that investment ceiling of all in but i don't think that there is so when we get raised here this is a spot where i feel like if you jam you actually go really really wrong here and to understand this i want to talk to you about something i call compartment theory villain's range has a few compartments usually he just has some hand that's felting regardless like a flush draw or king queen or queen jack or pocket jacks or a set or something like that and against all of those hands regardless of whether we win or whether we lose it doesn't really matter at all whether we stick it in now or call and then get it in on the turn or later however villain could have jack 10 of clubs if villain has jack 10 of clubs shoving the flop is an absolute abomination it's a terrible play so that's the only part of villain's range that's actually sensitive to your line here and that is why you have to call and not raise that's super important villain decides to go for all in here we peel it's the king jack of spades we run it twice we pray to somehow get there even though two of our spade outs are gone he says no and then the river comes the four of clubs is that enough results for you guys sometimes i get a hard time for forgetting to show you results so there you go you get the sweat you get the peel what more could you want okay this is another spot where you really want to be able to hand read to figure out what's going on this looked to me to be a reg i decided to call here you could four bet you could fold honestly this hand is like super close it can do almost anything i think with like ace queen you can you can do a bit of raise here if you want to build the raising range i wouldn't do it with ace nine particularly so we decide to call we check the turn if villain bets the turn here i'm really unhappy and i'll tell you why i think this pool is quite bad at bluffing under pair and there aren't many natural bluffs like gutter or flush draw in this spot with the ace and king being on board and the ace and king both being diamonds on the river i have two choices i can make some kind of really stupid block bet play which is just going to underperform massively and be terrible the reason that's going to suck is that even if villain has like a worse ace that's going to be super rare and they may not pay me off if they have king jack or king 10 they might just raise me sometimes and they're probably not going to call that often and it takes away all of their spew so by checking here we have to remember villain has still got here with sevens and nines and sixes sometimes and stuff like that maybe even fives like at some frequency so given the amount of under pair here and how useless and terrible those hands are people are going to over bluff if they bet this river the reason is that they just don't have enough straights and flushes or two pair or anything after the turn check ace queen plus is just going to bet turn at way too high of a frequency there's almost no flushes in this node this is a really over bluff spot this is an absolutely incredibly winning call villain actually went as high up as jacks here which just shows you just how much people can lose control of their bluffing range in spots where under pairs are terrible and feel the need to bluff we get a call from the small blind and a call from the big blind and we flop a straight so pretty amazing spot right off the bat here this player decides to lead for half pot and of course we're going to raise on this node right this is just basically going to be a pure raise ace king should not be in their range it's not that we're raising because we could have ace king and they can't we're raising because we have a straight against their bad player in a spot where we're going to do amazingly well by raising that's why we're raising so sometimes people take range advantage to the extreme they're like i'm going to raise because my range contain no 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 just just calm down like you have the nuts just raise the nuts yeah good now this happens so it's clearly a weaker player i would imagine they go ahead now they lead this turn that's pretty terrifying i'm like what the hell is going on i expect this to contain some merges like some hands that just don't know what to do now so i definitely don't think i can quite fold just yet but this sucks already and i think call is is to play i don't think we can do anything else here and then we face another really disheartening riverline which is jam and in this spot i just think this is super underbluffed now 
bet call flop multi-way lead turn over bet jam river let's just not call without a flush there i think this is a good fold but yeah left a bit of a sad taste in my mouth yeah i was kind of a big fan of the way i played this hand i quite liked it i found a sizing in a play that i might not find if i'm not playing well you know how you have like your a game and then you have that version of yourself that's just a bit brain dead and doesn't really find things like i imagined being him and i was like yeah that sucker wouldn't find this so went for like small c bet here in the flop blind versus blind against a recreational player they snap call turn is a seven i think triple off here is not like an unreasonable play at all there's a lot of wide range stuff going on there's a load of like call call folds here like eights or jack 10 or tens or something so maybe that was actually an even better play i have absolutely nothing though and my gto brain has like got to check this hand there's a minimum standard for bluffs so you know i didn't bluff because of that but it would have been okay on the river i get here in a situation where villain's range is quite a mixed bag of stuff and i think there's going to be a lot of hands here that fall to no size whatsoever like a queen or a jack like king jack ace jack king queen ace queen etc is very likely to call any sizing but I thought, do you know what? Why don't I try and find like an elasticity sweet spot, like an amount of of chips to put in the pot that needs very little fold equity. So this sizing I'm going for here, 10.3. If I do click the 10.3 big blind button, this, oh my God, I almost timed down. I didn't even realize that. That's so sus. But anyway, this needs like 25% fold equity. I think I'm winning never. So 25% fold equity here just means that villain's folding like ace 8 or ace 10 that they didn't realize they should have bluffed on the river or 10 9 or pocket 8s or something like that they don't ever have to be folding a jack or a queen so just remember like yeah when i make that bet i'm gonna get called a ton and yes maybe i would never play that for value and yes maybe i i only ever have ace ace deuce off or some other bluff when i take that line but it doesn't matter my opponent doesn't know that and so it's okay to have only bluffs in some spot people are like aren't you worried you'll over bluff or like pete you're over bluffing there that's so bad of you and i'm like what are you fucking talking about like why is that an issue if I think I'm getting way more fold equity than I need for those pot odds, then of course I should over bluff for that sizing and find some other value sizing that's less over folded to. So I really like the way I played this. I think there's just a, there's enough fold equity. There's something like 30% fold equity here and I need 25 and I'm going to take that all day. So in my estimations, a play I was happy to find. If you like the content, guys, let me know. There's going to be three videos a week still coming your way for the rest of the year. Hope you like these shorter ones and I'll see you again soon for the next one. It's carrotcorner.com for all of our stuff. Catch you later.